Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is the general overseer of Sunrise Banner Bible Church worldwide with international headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is commissioned by God to provide the ministry of the Word of God and to disciple the whole world through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sunrise Banner Bible Church, we believe in God, we believe what God says. Almighty Father, we do want to thank you. And so, dear Lord, we pray that you teach us your word today. Bless us through these Bible studies in Jesus' name. Amen. And everything you need to teach us from your word, everything you want us to learn, help us to learn them. Amen. For in Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Give me a glorious amen. amen. All right, we come to First Corinthians. As a church, we are studying from First Corinthians in all our Bible study this period. And you need to understand the background of First Corinthians. You need to know this church, these people, it was a center where you have all multi-millions people, where you have people that were very important in the Asia Minor. And because of their personalities, and because of who they were, it became necessary for Apostle Paul to give them attention. Because if they don't have attention, it's going to tell on the entire movement of the gospel. And so today, we want to look at this church. We want to study this church again. We are looking at the Bible study today. Gospel versus weakness of man. Gospel versus weakness of man. Apostle Paul needed to make it clear to them. That gospel cannot be equal with man. And that gospel, and that the weakness of gospel, the weakness of the cross, cannot be taken for granted. He has looked at the church. He has seen the attitude of the brethren in Corinth. And so it became so burdensome that they were dividing the church and that they were trusting in images and that they were trusting in persons and not trusting in the cross. And so at this point, it called the attention of the church to the cross. And making them see that the cross is everything. We are looking at First Corinthians chapter 1. We are going to back it up today with verse 25. In First Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 25. It says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than Man and the weakness of God is stronger than man. It equal and vex man foolishness with God's wisdom. It says, Look, Corinthian church, 
Don't take us for granted. Remember that the foolishness of God is greater than men. And that the weakness in us as ministers is stronger than men. That we tolerate what you do. That we take you for granted. That we just manage you. Does not mean that we are so weak that we cannot rebuke you. What has happened here is this. Paul the Apostles in current church and he has spent one and a half years as at this time and so because the Corinthian church has refused to pay what they have promised they promised that they were going to contribute and that they were going to put some money together to assist the journey to take him back to Macedonia and for him to be able to connect the Akai and all the Asia churches. And so he has waited for one and a half years. And discovered that they were not contributing. And they were not doing anything. And Apostle Paul will not preach. Give me money. And so because he's not going to ask them for money. He start farming. He start tent making. And why he was doing those businesses to raise some money and to go. The, some Jew who were at Jerusalem church, who knew about Paul, now decided to come to Corinthian church. And when they got into Corinthian church, they got disciples for themselves and said, you, you need to follow me. Have you heard about Apollos? He said, yes. I belong to Apollos. You, you need to follow me. Have you heard about Cephas, Peter? We've heard about him, but we have not seen him. I belong to Cephas. Follow me. Have you heard about Paul? Yes, Paul is here, but he's a weak man. Why do they call him a weak man? Because he didn't perform miracles. And so they said, he's here, he's weak. He told us that there is one cross. And that cross is telling us about we sat down here. The man came and left. He didn't give us our kingdom. We had in Psalm 22 and we had in Isaiah 53 that when the Messiah come, he was going to give us a kingdom. The man came and left. He never gave us a kingdom. And here Paul is, is preaching the cross that is foolishness. And he's telling us that we are, shouldn't be looking at miracles. We should be looking at the word of God. Every day writing letters. We are no longer interested in letters. We want to see miracles. I pray our attention will not be on miracles. You are not giving me Amen. Our attention is going to be on what? The word of God. And so he told them, it is the word. And so don't look at us that we are quiet and think that we don't know what we are doing. If you look at that chapter 1 verse 13 again, where we start. It says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Where or were ye baptized in the name of Paul. It says, look, you need to be wise. If you look at Paul here, first, he has called them to holiness. Second, he has called them to fellowship in part one and part two. And then third, he has told them about water baptism to say, water baptism is not a source, is not a guarantee of salvation. And so, he now take them to the cross. This is a comprehensive message. This is a total message. After solving the problem of the church, he took them to the cross. He showed them the way to the cross. If you preach all the message in your church, and the people are not taken to the cross, you preach nothing.
if you after performing all the miracles and the people are not taken to the cross you have preached nothing after you have put everything together and you have done everything and you come you labored and labored and labored and at the end of the day none of the people are taken to the cross you have done nothing apostle paul take them to the cross in chapter 1 first corinthians chapter 1 look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says for christ sent me not to baptize but to do what to preach the gospel it says i'm here for the good news i'm not interested in all the signs and wonders you're pursuing it says it's the gospel look at it again look at it look at that place it says not with wisdom of wars let's read the remaining one for me the cross of christ should be what made none of effect it says i am not here because i just want to talk to you just want to solve problem every day i come you give me problem to solve every day i come you give me trouble to judge and matters to judge you see that's not just why i'm here i'm here because i want the effectiveness of the cross i want the cross to be renounced again to be accepted again that all the power rested and invested in the cross i pray as a church we'll look for the cross i say we'll look for the cross and we will believe in the cross in jesus name and then after he said that he took them to baptism look at verse 12 chapter 1 verse 12 he says now this i say that every one of you said, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. If you look at what it says there, it says, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. As you carefully look at all the alphabet there, they are all I. There is no we. Anywhere you see divisions, what is the basis of divisions? Personal interest. It says, and I. There were none of them looking at the word we. I. Can they buy me my own? I. Can they give me my own position? I. Can they take care of me? I. Everything is I. You know, I have, I'm the general overseer. I am this. I, anytime you see a man saying I, wrong mentality. A person with I, that I will take you nowhere. It is I. Can we come together to pray? No, I. I don't do what they do. I don't talk the way they talk. My own is different. How will your own be a different in the midst of the brethren? I, people taking their interests beyond the will of God. I, I am praying today that the issue of I will be dead in this church. And we begin to see that quality of we. Brethren, have you eaten? Sister, have you eaten? And then, what are you going to? What are you thinking? Can we begin to think we? And remove I. And Apostle Paul says, look at all your pronunciations. It's I. You are coming to me with a mentality of I. It will take us nowhere. Let's go to the cross. Let's lay of the cross. Let's live the life of the cross. And things will change. And my prayer for this church is that we will live the life of the cross. Yeah. The cross is not I. It's vertical. It has origin. It's not I. It, if you look at the cross, it solves the problem 
of the four pillars of the world. It solved the problem of the east. It solved the problem of the north. It solved the problem of the south. It solved all the problem. It's connected to the four pillars of the world. It's not I. Jesus also would have rested on one pillar. If you study the Bible, you see that Jesus happened to be the first man crucified in the land of Jew with a four point a pole. Nobody has ever been done that. They put them on one eye. Jesus came and changed the handwriting. He says, it's no longer I. I am going to the cross to stretch my two hands. I am reaching the world. I am not reaching myself. It's no longer I. It's the world. I pray a gospel. We are taking it beyond I. We are taking it to we. I'm not hearing good, good. Amen. This gospel is going to increase in the name of Jesus. And so it's told them in chapter 2. Look at chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, Let all attentions go to the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 16. It says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that we may instruct him? But we, that is a man of God. But we, people who think like me, we are we. We are not I. It says, but we, read the remaining one for me there, have the mind of Christ. We are thinking like Christ. We are behaving like Christ. No agitation among us. We are like Christ. We are accommodative. We are like Christ. We tolerate. We are like Christ. It says, Jew, you can insult me. No problem. My mission, I will soon move to Macedonia. You can insult me. No problem. You can do everything you want to do. We have the mind of Christ. We don't fight. Judaism does not have the mind of Christ. Because those people from Jerusalem church, they were Judaism. And so they have came into the church with Judaism teaching. They were mixing the law with grace. And it says, faith without law is not working. And so they came into the church, teaching the church, heresies and divided the church. When you see people who come to this church and then they come and they are coming with their own personal interest and so they come to preach their interest. Be careful. It's not a ground to preach your interest. It is a ground to preach Christ. The cross. Every one of us, we are going back to the cross. We are going back to the life of Christ. We are going back to the duty of Christ. And then our own interests will be crucified and the interest of Christ only will reign. Give me loudness. Amen. Amen. God's wisdom is only revealed in the cross. If you are looking at the wisdom of God, go to the cross. And so Apostle Paul told them, Let's go to the cross. There you will see the wisdom of God. I'm looking at three points in this study. Point number one, stumbled at the cross. Stumbled at the cross. Point number two, the contradiction of our misery. The contradictions of our misers. And then point number three, the cross, our instrument of power. The cross, our instrument of power. If you're looking at power, 
You look for the cross. We go back to point number one. Stumbled at the cross. Chapter 1 in verse 23. A. Chapter 1 verse 23. A. As you look at A there it says but we preach Christ crucified. All we are preaching is the crucifixion of Christ. I died for you. I he brought the church alive. Upon this rock I built my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Christ is this rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. It says, if you come to the cross and you come to the church and you rest at the cross, he said, the cross will give you solution. My prayer and my single prayer for everyone under the sound of my voice all over the world is that there will be a change of thinking and that we will not stumble at the cross. Can you look up here for a moment? Why do they stumble at the cross? As you trace the history of the Israelite, the Jew, leaving Egypt, miraculous. Elijah came, miraculous. Elisha came, miraculous. As you look at Joshua, miraculous. That was why that as soon as Joshua was taking them and they got to Gilgal, they says, give us miracle. Pitch the tent. Pitch. Just get us the stone so we can worship it. We need miracles. They don't believe that there is miracles in the cross. Why? Because Jesus came. And did not give them their kingdom. Their mentality was when the Messiah come, according to Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22, they believed that when once Jesus come, they were going to take over all the Roman Empire and they were going to take over all the kingdom of the world. And now Jesus came and went to the cross. And so to them, the cross is foolishness. And so to them, the cross cannot give miracle. And Apostle Paul is preaching the cross. And so because he's preaching the cross, they say, this man is too weak. We can't follow you. We are of safers. We are not of you. You are not telling us, blind eyes see. You are not telling us we are going to have manna tomorrow. You are not telling us that we are not a sinner. You are not telling us that life without righteousness is okay. You are not telling us what we want to hear. You are telling us what to say the Lord is telling you. You see, I choose to be like Paul. If nobody wants to come here, no problem, bye-bye. I choose to be like Paul. I choose to preach the cross. I choose to preach the truth. I choose to preach the total gospel. Good news to the world. I was telling them the cross is a good news. They say no, the cross is a bad news. And who is the good news? Those Judaism and all those people that comes from Jerusalem. Don't forget, there has been this prophecy to say, this man from Antioch's church that is bound, so he will be bound in Jerusalem. 
And so there has been this prophecy to say, Paul the apostle is not going to have it easy. Where? In Jerusalem. And so all those people in Jerusalem were basically after his life, they want to finish his life. And my prayer, my humble prayers, is that God is going to do wonders again in the life of our people in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me great, great amen again. Amen. Wonderful amen again. Amen. And God did it. So they stumbled at the cross. In chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians verse 14. Chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians verse 14. But the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. That was the problem. They were coming with a natural sense. Coming with a natural laws. Coming with a natural agitation. They forget that it is the spirit that giveth life. And they were not ready to take the inspiration. They were ready to take the aspiration. And the aspiration becomes important to them than the inspiration. I pray that as a church, we look more into inspiration. And do very little with aspiration of man. I pray this sound clear to our ears in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 14 again. It says, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. For they are what foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually what designed. It doesn't made for them. So each time he's telling them about the cross, spiritual, they are talking about their own carnal. Carnality and spirituality cannot go together. And so when people come with their own carnal thinking, and you are telling them, look at how to dress as a Christian. They tell you, why are you pushing me like that? Look at how to live your life as a child of God. They're telling you, do you know I went to one mountain of Zion. This was what we saw. Why are you changing it here? They want everything to be the same. It can't be the same. What I come to preach is not what the Judaism has come to preach. My message is different. My message is of the cross. My message is inspiration. And so if you want to compare with what you used to know, you will make blunder mistakes. Look at chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. I love this my apostle, great man of God, Apostle Paul. Look at verse 18. It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that do what? Perish foolishness. You see, when I tell them the cross, it's not making sense to them. When I told them that that cross is the source of our power, they say, no, that is not the source of our power. If that was the source of our power, it would have given us the kingdom. Where is he? Why has he left? And if he has left, when is he coming back? And if it's not coming back now, when exactly is it coming back? And so they dispute the cross. And so they argued with the cross. And so they discounted the cross. I pray the cross will be a priority in our lives. Church, you're not giving me amen. amen. This cross, a priority in our lives. And this cross, glory in our lives. And God will help us and give us grace to always depend and trust in the cross in Jesus' name. So they stumbled where? At the cross. And why did they stumble at the cross? Because they thought the power was not in the cross. And so their mind were on their own and natural wisdom. When, when you give attention to the world, everything will come. Am I talking to you? When you give attention to studying the world, every other thing will come. Forget about miracles. Miracles will come. 
Forget about size that we come. Stop using candle. Stop using all these things you are doing. Today you are breaking coconut. Today you are breaking this. You are looking for that. You have drank all the olive oil. What are you doing with them? You are wearing bangles. What are you doing with them? They have given you this other cloth to wear. They have given you this other thing. To... What are you doing with them? What do you need them for? All you need is the name of Jesus. It will set you free. It can give you everything. There is nothing ever you need that the name of Jesus cannot give to you. We will go back to the cross. Amen. What is the problem of the church today? They've taken the people out of the cross and the church today is now to a man. And they were once to come they say, this is our general overseer. You have to lie down for the general overseer. You can't lie down for a general overseer. Lie down for Jesus. Jesus is the author and finishers of your faith. And he is all. As we give attention to the cross, the power of the cross will release us and set us free in Jesus' name. As Apostle Paul convinced them, he told them, you are a joker. You don't know what you are talking about. Let me show you that in Acts chapter 1. You say you don't know what you are talking about. You are accusing me of being weak. Because I preach Christ. Say go back to the cross. Now Jesus will give you everything you need. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. We need to run for time. Acts chapter 1. In verse 16. Acts chapter 1 verse 16. It says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to, to Israel? That is verse 6. And then I come back to verse 16. Now I come back to verse 16 now. I read verse 6 the first time. Will you at this time restore it back to us? Now look at verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must need to have been what? Fulfilled. Which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David. That is Psalm 22 now. By the mouth of David speak before concerning Judah. Concerning Judah, that is Isaiah 53. And then it says, which was guide to them that do what? That took Jesus. Look at verse 17. For he was numbered with us. And has obtained part of this ministry. Can you look up here? Judas Iscariot has betrayed Jesus. And after he betrayed Jesus, and he has hanged himself and died. And now that he has died, he come to ask, and the brethren in the house of John Mark has come together to say, now that Judas has gone, and we are remaining 11 disciples. How are we going to preach the word? We need to replace Judas Iscariot. And so they looked up and prayed. And it says, Now do we need to still anoint or tend people to join us? And they say, No, we cannot. Let's check among those people that were one of us when we were one twenty thousand. Let's check on those people. And if you look at the next verse up there, look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The numbers of names together were about what? Hundred and what? 20. He says, let's go back there. Which one believed in this our ministry? Because there were people who didn't believe in the cross. 
They say, do we not tell you that Jesus was not going to give us anything? He has died like a mere man. She be they crucify him. She be they have buried him. And even when they said he has gone for ascension, some of them say, no, he go nowhere. And so the church were mixed with Judaism, scribes, Pharisees, St. Hendrys, and true believers. But God is going to give us more of true believers. Yeah. That all of us come to the church does not mean that we all belong to the same group. That all of us wear coat does not mean that we all belong to the same group. That all of us stand on the altar does not make all of us of the same group. Some of us came to preach Christ, not to preach money. Some of us come to preach Christ, not to do. Some of us come to preach Christ and eternity. Some of us come to preach Christ, a comprehensive Christ. Total Christ. Christ with righteousness and prosperity. Some of us come to preach Christ and the beauty of Christ. And I pray and I welcome you to that ministry. Come on, this church. I say, I welcome you to that ministry. Yeah. And that was so when I, when he was talking there, he says, "Let's choose Matthias because it was part of this ministry. He understands this ministry. We cannot make you this and that. You don't want to understand the ministry. You didn't know the vision. You didn't know where we are going to. And all you are interested in, give me position. Which of the position?" You didn't know about righteousness? Give me position. You didn't know about holiness? Give me positions. You didn't know about one man, one wife? Give me positions. You didn't know about eternity? Give me positions. You didn't know about a calling? Give me positions. God is going to make us, all of us, who will understand this ministry. Amen. Great, great, amen. amen. Point number two, the contradiction. Of our Messiah. The contradiction of our Messiah. They contradicted the Messiah. In Psalm 22, if you finish that chapter, you will see that the Messiah there was not Christ. They contradicted it. They didn't know the Bible. And if you go to Isaiah 53 and you study there, you will see that that Messiah there was not referring to Christ. But they didn't have patience to study it, so they misplaced Christ to that Messiah. That was not a Messiah of Christ. It was referring to a deity of Aaronite. And so he said, that person you had seen in Isaiah 53 is not Christ. They contradicted it. And because their mind, their thoughts were higher than the message. And so they want to just believe what they agree to and not what the Bible is teaching. We will believe in the Bible. Amen. Can you give me another Amen. I say we will believe in the Bible. Yeah. So that pointed to different things. When you get back home, you can read those two scriptures. If I go back there, it can take me another two hours. Showing you that and giving you the difference between the Aaronite and then the Messiah of 53 of Isaiah. It's a serious thing. It can take me one month teaching that. And so, if you look at that and people get confused today, that is what is happening. People get into the Bible because they don't know the next word. They pick a word and then they use that to deceive the entire congregation. They get into the Bible and now today I'm seeing one thing that is flying around. Thank God for my wife, wonderful woman. Each time we see some, he will ask me, Daddy, is this, does he agree to the Bible? I say no. Yesterday she brought some blood like that to me. And he said, there is some country blood is running on the water. And then people are quoting it from the Bible. And then she brought it and said, but this is not what, what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. 
And even right now, people are telling us that there is angel on the sky. That is not what the Bible teaches. Bible did it say angel will come first before Jesus comes? Today, people are saying things and, you know, Bible is no longer the basis. Social media is now the basis. There is one other thing like this that is running like this is going where or something, social media, and they say coronavirus is leaving Nigeria. So many things is going on. The belief of the Bible is dead. None of these diseases which I shall brought on the Egyptians, the people of the world. Coronavirus is not made for a born again. It's made for these other people. I don't know them. I don't want to mention their names. Can you give me amen? And today people can't eat anymore. People can't wake up anymore. People can't even look at people's face like this. They look at their face. They say they catch coronavirus. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Including what? Coronavirus. Why are you worrying yourself? You are armed with the blood of Jesus. And Jesus, that blood has covered you. Nothing will touch you. Can you say nothing will touch me? Will say it again. Your mother conqueror. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, as you look at Luke 21, 13 through to verse 35, it talked about the true Messiah. It talked about the true Messiah. And that the true Messiah, how it will come. And what will happen? What we precede is coming. And how it will go back and how it will come back and becomes a king. He talked about showing us the way to Mininia Reign. That there will be a Mininia Reign. And that that time you are looking at Christ and contradicting Christ is not the right time. The right time is coming. It's coming as the king of kings and the lord of lords is coming. And when he come again, we will reign with him. Amen. Give me great, great amen. amen. I say we are reigning with him. Amen. It's going to come, the Bible says, and the trumpet shall sound. And the death in Christ shall rise first. It didn't say the angel shall appear first. Let's be careful. The church is no longer looking at Bible. That's the problem. One pastor will just come up like this. Since I started this preaching, it ought to have been everywhere. He said, for God so loved the world. Somebody will read there. For God so loved the world. He said, for God so loved the world. That he give his only begotten son. That he give his only begotten son. Whosoever believe it, whosoever believe it. That's how they sing Bible. And after they sing that, the man gets into the congregation. He will never open Bible again. He starts telling us how he went to America. He starts telling us how his wife kissed him. He starts telling us all manner of stories. There is no Bible anymore. And so the church is in diabetic of Bible. The world is gone. The only interest today is come, we give you miracles. Come, we give you this. My brother, my sisters, can we come back to this world? This church, this is where we will be. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. The basis of the gospel. And this gospel will set us free in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three the cross, our instrument of power. This cross 
is the instrument of power. If you are looking for any power, you are looking for any miracles, you are looking at the person of Jesus, go to the cross. Look at the cross. It was on the cross. He said, it is finished. He didn't say it is finished at Jerusalem church. <laughs> the trouble cannot be finished through Jerusalem. He was in the Israelite. He didn't say it's finished in Israel. Even if you go for pilgrim in Israel and tour run all over Israel, it can't be finished. The olive oil from Israel that looks so powerful can never make it finished. He didn't say it is finished when he gets all over the places he went through. He didn't tell them it was finished. Where did he say it's finished? On the cross. All the power is pointed to the cross. My trouble is finished. From where? From the cross. If my pain needs to go away, I need to look at the cross. If I need to be delivered, I need to look at the cross. If my poverty will finish, I need to look at the cross. Any day I remove my eye from the cross and I look at a pastor, I will fail. Any day I remove my eyes from the cross and I look at what church will do for me, I will fail. Any day I remove my eyes from the cross and I'm looking at what wife, what children, what neighbors will do for me, I'll fail. The cross is the totality. The cross is everything. That is the instrument of our power. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 23a, it says, but we preach Christ crucified. We looked at Christ crucified. He was bruised for our iniquity. For the chastisement was upon us. And by his stripes I am healed. The healing that take away whatever corona this is, it comes from the cross. The day you move your eyes from the cross, as a minister of the gospel, you're finished. The day your message is no longer pointing to the cross, the cross ends olive oil. Don't forget, before Acts chapter 1, even Jesus himself uses the oil. It was the cross that ended it. And that is why when you get to Acts chapter 1, they say now that Jesus has resurrected, it's no longer Jesus, it's not Christ. The anointing in us is now anointing with us. Do we need that again? They say no. We are now moving with the anointing. The anointing is not just with us now. It's not just in us now. It's now with us. I pray that in this church, no fake, no heresies, no dirty word, God will give us a comprehensive word. And we are going to make it up to heaven together in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. It says, look at it, look at it. The cross is Remedious instrument of power. The weakness of God in the cross is stronger, mightier, heavier than any man. And so we will go to the cross. And God will help us as we go back to the cross in Jesus' name. 
Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Read there, we pray now. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. To the Jew first. I love this man Paul. To the Jew first. To the Jew first. He said, see me here, I stay with you because I knew it was to the Jew first. But remember, it is also for the Greek. I came to you first, not that I don't know the road to Gentile. I gave it to you first, but remember, it's also for the Greek. You see, brethren, God gave us this opportunity, but it's only for us first. It's also for others. When you play with it, God look for others. See what happened after this one and a half years? Paul the apostle left that place and he went to Macedonia. If you are a Bible scholar. And when he got to Macedonia, they received him. They cleaned all those tears away from him. They made him glad. And they contributed so much of money. And that money, when Paul came back with that money, they judged him with that money. They says, Paul, you told us that when you were bringing the money from Macedonia, you were going to share among the poor people. Where all the poor people here? How much have you given to them? Bring all the money. Let's share. I was supposed to say, but this money was given to me for the poor. Not only for Corinthian church, but for Asia Minor. And I need to also go around other places. They say, no. If you will not share the money, we'll kill you here. They didn't contribute it, but they want to share it. That is what happened today. There are people who are in church, they don't contribute, but they want to share from the church. Church give me, church give me, they don't give to church. Church, I'm dying, church, I'm surviving. They are not adding any value to the church. To the Jew first. But remember, it is also for the Greek. Don't make guy. Don't do shakara for God. It's also for the Greek. If you don't make good use of it, God is going to look for the Greek and give it to them. And my prayer for you is you will be the first and you will remain the first. Can you do that amen better than that? I say you'll be the first and you will remain the first. We were looking at the message, gospel versus weakness of man. And what is the weakness of man? They take their eyes from the cross and they take their eyes to look at themselves. They felt they were okay. They felt that the cross cannot give them anything. They felt that that Judaism law was everything. They felt that everything they needed was there with the Judaism. And they are in their wisdom. But their wisdom was foolishness to the cross. Let's stand up as we pray together. I'd like you to pray a prayer today and say, Father, may I not come to you with my wisdom? May I not come to you with my own ability? May I not come to you with an intention? May I come to you with an empty heart? That you alone can fill my heart. Can I hear you pray? Brethren, I know you can pray. In this church, we prayed.
is sent for this world. And his word he led them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can you just open your eyes and look at me? My beloved sisters and brothers, please, where is Christianity today? Where do we keep Christianity? What are we really doing now? Are we doing club or we are doing Christianity? Christianity is the cross. Club is our wisdom. We want to go to God to pray this single prayer. Take me to the cross that is greater than I. Can you pray that prayer right now? Father, take me to the cross. That is greater than me. I know that the cross is greater than I. Take me to that cross. That is greater than me. Let the cross. Crush the sin of my life. Let the cross. Make me great again. Let the cross perfect my life. Let the cross solve the problem. Touch the problem. Take me back to the cross. That's greater than I. I wish there are believers in this house that we pray like a believers. We are not saying you should think. We say you should pray. We are not saying you should murmur. We say you should pray. You didn't come to look. You come to pray. You didn't come to see. You come to pray. Oh Lord, take me to the cross. That's greater than I. Take me to that cross that is greater than I do so that my mentality will die so that my desire will die so that my person will die and my wisdom will die let me look at the wisdom of God let me look at the way of God. Let me look at the mind of God. So that my own thinking will die. And let me look at the mind of God. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Take me to the cross. That is greater than I. back long. I miss it some time ago. I lost it some time ago. I misplaced it some time ago. I have lost it some time ago. I lost the cross. I lost the righteousness. I lost the heavenly vision. I lost the race. I lost the glory. Oh Lord.